summer heat really kicking into high gear right now. He's not gonna survive the summer. No. Mike just sent me a text right now. These are my tire tracks. Zoom in. Those are fresh paw prints over my tire tracks. The Husky is right in the area. My name is Brandon McMillan. As a professional animal trainer, I've spent my entire career traveling the world, seeing it for its beauty and its grit. Every country I've visited, no matter how beautiful, always seem to have a similar problem. It's stray population. This includes my own city, Los Angeles, California. It has one of the largest stray populations in the entire country. My mission, capture these dogs safely and get them the help they need. This is Stray Recon. What's up, Mike? Hey, Brandon, how you doing? Yeah, thanks for, meet, you, right? yeah, thanks for meeting so early. No problem, man. So what's going on here? Well, this Husky has been out here since, oh gosh, six, eight weeks, at least somewhere in thereabouts. Uh, it's been seen on this road over here, and then it basically hangs out at this stop sign, and it comes out at dusk usually. What do you mean, just hangs out? He just, just stays right here? here? Yeah, just basically runs up and down the street here. So tell me about this broken leg. Uh, about a week and a half ago, it came up and it had a bad right rear leg. Uh, when you say bad, is it broken or you think it's just a limp? It's Well, it's not putting any weight on it, so I'm figuring it has to be broken. And that's obviously going to affect everything because with the summer heat really kicking into high gear right now, he's not going to survive the summer. No. It's a, it's a lonely place out here too, as you can tell. Do the people that see him, do they know if he's got a den over here? Has anyone located anything? Nobody's gone looking, so that's the other downside. But I say it's almost, it's almost like clockwork out here. I mean. He comes out, hangs out. I'm, I'm suspecting that's probably when he was dumped. So he will hang out of this corner sometime today. Okay, so we should be setting one trap right here and then another one somewhere in here. You're pretty certain he comes He comes over from this area? Yeah. I think maybe one behind this thing. He's gonna come out probably any time now because the sun's coming up. Mike and I begin surveying the area and we find evidence that the dog has been here very recently. Boom, boom, right, boom. Right to the stop sign area. So it just rained two nights ago, so these tracks are obviously fresh. Yeah. All right, good. He's in the area. This is just the smelliest stuff known to man, apparently. But it's canned chicken. Yeah, you got a whiff right away, right? Yeah. See? Yeah, see? That's why it works. Put a bit of that juice around here, maybe. We're finding tracks all through this field right here. And what's happening is the tracks are basically all leading in this direction right here. One live trap set on the stop sign over there. It's about maybe 100 yards that way. Second live trap is set right here. It's about uh, 50 feet that way. We have a bait trail leading to the traps. The bait trail, you want to create a, de a debris field about maybe 50 feet, 50 feet away from the tracks. And then the debris field eventually narrows out into a funnel that leads right into the live trap. So we have two of those going on. Uh, Mike's gonna get his mountain bike out and he's gonna take a little ride through here to see if he can find uh, a den. I'm gonna take my truck. Well, these are tire tracks that are a bit probably east of you. Mike just sent me a text right now. These are my tire tracks, which just happened in the last 10 minutes. You zoom in. Those are fresh paw prints over my tire tracks. The Husky is right in the area, literally following us as we speak. So the Husky is within, I wanted to say maybe a one mile radius, which is not much around here. So the corner is over there about 200 yards, which is where he's, gets, he's been seen every day. My guess is he's heading right there because that's a familiar area. Once he heads there, there's gonna be a lot of food waiting for him in that trap. As I scan the area, I see no sign of the dog but I see lots of evidence the dog is in the area, along with resources that would keep the dog alive. The sprinkler runoff from the high school creates a puddle where the dog can drink fresh water every day. This would be the only thing that would keep this dog alive in the desert heat. So the crew's gone home for the night and I'm gonna go ahead and do the right here because I know he's still out here. Uh, the sun's gonna be down in about another half. Half hour, 45. Uh, he comes from the field right here. The wind is actually facing this direction. It's heading uh, this way, probably about 10 to 15 miles an hour. And apparently he comes and uses this clearing right here as a vantage point. The neighborhood is over there a few hundred yards that way. So I'm gonna set the uh, trap up in this area and downwind when I put the bait in there. Hopefully he catches the, uh, the scent of it. All 
All right, the trap is set. I've got a wildlife camera, a motion sensor, night vision camera, literally five feet from the uh, trap set on it. I got a good chance of catching him. It's uh, from now until probably a couple hours after dark. If not, uh, tomorrow morning, he will be up and he will be hungry. Somewhere here, if I remember right. I can't even find my own uh, my own traps. I said I tried to hide them in here, pretty deep. And uh, there it is. We have no dog in there. But the good news is, it's prime time right now. We got about a four-hour window before the heat starts showing its ugly face. So right now, until about 9:30, 10, it's gonna uh, be prime time to uh, get this guy. So we're gonna go ahead and step out of here and get a spot we can see with binoculars and see if uh, we get any action. As the sun started coming up, I took a few minutes to set the trap and set the cameras. I backed off about 100 yards away and got a good vantage point. To my surprise, the dog showed up just a few minutes after I left. And it was not alone. Yeah, that was fast. We literally just set the trap uh, two minutes ago and we got out just in the nick of time. He walked right in there, he's in. Problem is, I don't know this other one and if he gets away, we just have another problem out here. We have another dog and you see he's kind of walking away right now. Yeah, see, I'm not gonna get within 50 yards of this dog. He's timid, he's not letting me close. There he goes. So I am not gonna be able to approach him. Hey buddy, hey. So this guy, he might be really freaked out when I approach him. We'll see. But the whole point is, this is the one with the, uh, this is the one with the injured leg. Hi, we're not gonna hurt you. We're not gonna hurt you. Hi, it's okay, sweetie. We're not gonna hurt you. We're not gonna hurt you, it's okay. It's okay. You're okay, buddy. You're gonna get help, all right? You're okay. We have to lift him up, get him in the truck, and uh, first things first, we have to get his leg checked out. I don't know if it's a broken leg or if it's an ACL tear, but either way, it's, a, uh, it's an issue that has to be dealt with because um, with the uh, triple digit temperatures coming in just a few days, this dog would have never survived. There you go, sweetie. Come on, sweetie, there you go. Look it, it's right here. No? I know, you're terrified, it's okay. She has no idea what's going on. She's absolutely terrified. It's all right, sweetie. We're gonna get you help. You can smell me, it's okay. It's okay. Let's get her loaded up. There you go, relax. Take a load off here, let me see what you take. One more treat. Come here, sweetie. What's this? Oh yeah, you're gonna like these. Oh yeah. Those are really good, aren't they? Even though it seems like quick work this morning, uh, it was a two day mission out here trying to get this girl. Sun just came up, what, 20 minutes ago. It's, it's only uh, 6.15 in the morning. Now the, uh, the real challenge uh, begins. This dog has, a, has an injured leg and we gotta see what's going on with it. I don't know if it's broken. I don't know if it's an ACL, but either way, our first stop is the, uh, the vet to make sure that uh, everything's good with that leg. And assuming everything is, first thing I'm gonna do is get her back to the ranch, scan her for a microchip, see if she has a home she escaped from. If we can't contact them, if we're failed in the contact with them, uh, obviously she is available for adoption. I'm gonna find her a home and hopefully she goes on to a better life. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I know, I know, I know, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, so I didn't see her limp this morning because I, I, I only saw it I only saw the trap caught, her, caught everything. I think we should put her in a, an enclosed room. Definitely. We're gonna lift her yes. in this, yeah. Because yes. I don't wanna take the chance. If I lift this oh, and no, try no, no. 
We, she so darts out on let's me. Let's look at, let's assess this. Yeah. Let's assess which room you want to put her in. Any dog stuck in the desert is fighting for survival. An injured dog stuck in the desert has no chance of survival. This dog was caught in the nick of time. Now it's time to show her that not all humans are the bad guys. All right, sweetie. Let's do this right. Come here. You can come out. Yeah, she's gonna retreat back there. It's okay, sweetie, come on. I know it'll change your mind. Oh yeah. It's right there. Oh, good girl. Oh, good girl. Here, get all those you want. Good girl. You got in there, you can walk out, you know. No, oh, look at that. That's some trust. I like where we're going with this. You gotta lean, you gotta start reaching. <laughs> Here, I'll make you a deal. We'll switch flavors. You don't like these ones. These are my dog's personal favorite. There you go. Good. Let me see if I can put a collar on her. This is always the fun part. How big is your head? Let's see if we can do a little size match here. I tried multiple times to get a collar around her neck, but she was just too timid. Now, it's a waiting game. The main rule with a dog like this is you don't go to them. You let them come to you. There you go. Oh, yeah. Aww. That's going to make you feel better. Let me see if I can pull it out a little further. There you go, sweetie. There you go. It's not bad out here. Aww. There you go. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Aww. That's cool. Good, look at that. Oh yeah. Now that she exited the trap, this tells me that she's getting more comfortable. From here, it's time to earn her trust. Look at that, oh my gosh, perfect fit. Perfect fit, look at that, beautiful. Beautiful, oh, you like the chin, don't you? You love the chin. <laughs> She's like literally leaning into my hand, like she put more pressure, oh yeah. Can I get an age range? Oh, you're young. Yeah, you're probably like three. See the stark white of the canine right there. If it's all white, they're usually Maybe two, maybe under three, but if it's a little bit of browning like it is right there, that's usually in the around three years old range. If you are gonna be caught out in the desert, it's, it's an ideal age. You're old enough to uh, defend yourself and you still have you know, all the energy and your health. You have, you have it up here, but when they're too old, if she was uh, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old, there's, that's not a good uh, combination for being stuck out in the desert. Now the dog has opened up a little more. It's time to go talk to the vet about the dog's leg. Come on, let me show you what's going on in this x-ray, because you can tell a lot about an x-ray whenever your pet's limping or they think it's torn a ligament, the cruciate ligament. Now this is, I always x-ray the good knee. There's the good knee, okay? And this is Ashi's bad knee. Now you can see right here, that's where the ligament, the cruciate ligament, keeps the knee stable. Now you see there's a huge difference between this and this. This nice dark area is clear. When you have all that white area, that means there's liquid or effusion. I don't want to get too technical, but what that tells me is there is an injury to her cruciate ligament. When you're dealing with an issue like this, it's always good to get a second opinion. 
and they both agree this leg will heal naturally over the next few months, as long as she's isolated with little to no movement. After that, we did a full panel of blood work on her, making sure she's healthy. At that point, she was good to go back to the ranch. All right, cool. Okay. Can I take these too? Yeah. <laughs> here, look at it, right here. No? You sure? Here, I'll put it right there. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, look at that. <laughs> Much better. Much better than a, a dugout hole in the middle of the desert. Her first few days at the ranch, all she did was sleep. I swear I've never seen a dog sleep so much in my life. She must have slept 23 hours a day. Okay, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. Something tells me you've never seen the inside of the house, have you? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, one, two, three, and oh yeah. Oh my goody gosh. And look at that. Oh, first on, first time on the couch. You're gonna like that. Lie down. You can lie down. Oh, thank you so much, thank you so much. Yeah, I know, that's much better than the desert. I know it's kind of weird, huh? Big, soft, spongy. What the heck's going on? Ear scratch, head scratch, shoulder scratch. Back scratch, chin scratch, and snout scratch. Oh, there we go, there we go. Are you saying I'm better than a couch? Over the next few weeks, we began the training and socialization process. She surprised me how well she did. There we go, all the way, go on, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, perfect. That's a down, perfect, good, give me a down. Give me a down, give me a down. Good, beautiful. Okay, okay. Ashi, Ashi, come on, come on. <clears throat> oh, I see, she's afraid of cars. One, two, three, and I got you, oh. The last step in the process, before she went to her new forever home was to get her spayed. The Lucy Pet Foundation has done over 28,000 free spay and neuters for dogs and cats in need. It's been a uh, very emotional a few weeks with this dog. Uh, when I caught her, she was a very frightened, timid uh, little girl in the desert, running around uh, with a limp. And although we checked her leg out, it's still on the mend. It'll be a few more months of uh, healing naturally. Yeah, I know. It's uh. This is a hard one. Catching any dog in the streets is uh, emotional, but the condition she was in um, and the fact that the desert heat was just about to kick into full gear, it was a death sentence for her. Um, so knowing that she's safe and sound and she's about to go into her new forever home in just a few minutes, it makes it all the, all the more better. So this is probably one of the sweetest Huskies I've ever rescued. I mean, Huskies are great dogs, but this one, she's different. She has this calmness about her, but also this pure sense of confidence about her too. It's a very rare combination you'll see in dogs. And so ironically, it's, it's in a Husky. So Huskies are known for being calm, but this girl, she kind of, uh, she kind of broke the mold with that one. So let's get you home. Come on. Come on. This is it, Ashi. You scored the jackpot. This neighborhood uh, Ashi's going to is very, very nice neighborhood in Los Angeles. Um, it's up in the hills and it has a view of the entire city. I don't know what Ashi's thinking, but I'm just kind of guessing if she had the choice between going back to the desert um, and fending for herself and living off grasshoppers and jackrabbits or living up here in the beautiful hills of uh, Los Angeles, she might pick this area. Hi. She's home. Oh my gosh. She's home. Ashi, hi. Oh my gosh, she's like my first husky. She's the same size. Really? And they look alike. Pocket husky? 
Yeah, and they, yeah. they, they, they and she had a problem with her left leg. Oh, that's so funny. She's gonna miss you. I would just think, yeah, well, I'm gonna miss her too. Trust oh, me. Oh, look at that. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, I know. Um, when I was driving up here, I was just thinking to myself, she scored the jackpot. I'm so excited. What do you think? Uh, she has no idea what's going on. I know. Not I the know. first clue. She's like, all right, this is cool. When are we going back to the ranch? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Where are all my friends? You may as well get comfortable. Ashi! Yeah, I know. I know. Oh. It's going to be okay, Ashi. We are going to be great. So nice to meet you. Yes. So excited. She is such a good husky. Yeah. I'm telling you, I've dealt with so many of them and they can be a little wishy washy. Yes, they can. Um, she's so stoic. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're locked in. You're gonna you're gonna love it here. Yes. All right, that should last you for a little bit. You need more? Call me. Okay, no, thank you so much. I mean, really. Oh, I hate this part. I know, I bet. Yeah, she's gonna look around the house now after you leave, I know it. She's gonna. Yeah. Be good. Well, that does it. One more episode of Stray Recon in the books. This one was different though. Poor little dog didn't stand a chance. The California desert is no place for a dog like that, especially with an injury. Thankfully, she was saved and now she's in a beautiful home. If you like what you saw today, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share. I'm Brandon McNoy. Thanks for watching.